Hey everybody, Marty Mazzor. It's November 29th, 2012. We are in the midst of the great debate over the so-called fiscal cliff. And what you're about to watch is an illustration I did for you back in April of this year um, where, I, where I used Art Laffer's Laffer Curve illustration to make what I believe are some very important points as it relates to taxes and it is uh, very applicable to today's debate. So, uh, so here you go, and uh, thanks for watching. He likes to illustrate that at a 0% tax bracket, the government collects zero income taxes, and at a 100% tax bracket, the government would collect zero income taxes, of course, because nobody would work. And in between, there's this curve. Okay. Now, we are all painfully aware of the fix that we have ourselves in. As taxpayers, we have been obligated to more than our revenue would pay for in terms of the government. And there, there is a school of thought that says, you know, we need to fix that by raising tax rates, by going from, say, you know, in, in, for example, say maybe from here to here. And according to the Laffer curve, that would indeed raise tax revenue. Okay. Now, there is a, an opposing school of thought that says, no, that's incorrect that when we raise tax rates, we are going to suck resources from the private sector. The economy is then going to contract, and the net result is going to be job losses, less production, and less government revenue. Um, now, I would agree that when we raise taxes on the private sector, we have less resources in the private sector, and I would agree that it's much better allocated here as opposed to here. But when rates are just going from a relatively low level to a little, you know, to a higher level, the net effect would be, according to the Laffer curve, a net increase in tax revenue. Okay. Now, of course, there is a point that would be at the top of the curve where that does not work, where that logic, if we raise rates from, say, here out to here, okay, here to here, if you will, that we actually see a net reduction in tax revenue. Tax revenues go from here down to, say, here, okay? And that would be for obvious reasons, because at this tax rate, you know, look where we're headed. There is, there is a tremendous incentive to not make money, to report less money, to spend your resources on tax strategies so that you report less money, perhaps legitimate or otherwise. Um, so again, at, at this crazy rate, there's, there's, there's incentive to not produce, and therefore, you end up with less revenue than you would at a more productive rate. Now, there is this school of thought, we'll say it's over here to the right side of the curve, that likes to say, these people like to say that every tax cut pays for itself. Um, you, you can't agree with that if you agree with the Laffer curve concept. You could say, however, that over here on the right side, if we were to go from, say, here back to here or here to here, that we actually would see an increase in tax revenue, which makes sense because at this rate, presumably, people are incentivized enough to make money, to create jobs, to, to, to pursue their objectives, to, to consequently report more income. So reducing rates from, from over here on the right side to here, once again, increases tax revenue. But that idea that every tax cut pays for itself doesn't work when you get to the left side of the curve. When you go from, say, here to here, um, while you would leave more money, better allocated in the private sector, there's not enough additional incentive like there is from, say, here to here that would create enough extra oh, activity to offset the reduction in taxes that you'd get from going from this rate to this rate. There would be some offset, but at the end of the day, you would net a reduction in government revenue. Okay. Now, folks, the reason I bring this up is, is just because of the predicament that we're finding ourselves in. Um, we are, right now as a government, we're not, politically, we're not going after current tax increases. We're talking about it. And there may be some that go into effect next year. But um, we're talking, we're just essentially borrowing more and more money. All that simply means is that we're, we're, we prefer to let our children and grandchildren pay for all this uh, stuff we're paying for currently out of borrowing. At the end of the day, folks, it is going to come to roost with us. And I, my concern is I don't have much faith that the government is going to allocate those dollars in a way that are really going to stimulate the economy to offset these increases in taxes in the future. So I think we do have to get a handle on this sooner than later. 
and, and that's why I'm you know, drawing you this illustration. I hope this makes sense. Now, I want to spend the next couple of minutes distinguishing between different types of income or different types of taxes. So far, I've been talking about income taxes, and I think we'd agree that the more we tax something, the less of it we get. When we tax the consumer's income or raise taxes on the consumer's income, the consumer is indeed going to have less income. And certainly when we raise taxes on investing, when we raise capital gains taxes, we get less investing, right? Now that's actually scheduled to happen January 13, if, or January of 2013, if we don't do something about it sooner. Okay, so if we raise, again, raise taxes on investing, we're going to get less investing. I mean, you can't disagree, even if you just do the simple math, if there's more taxes on capital gains, there's less tax, there's less capital gains to reinvest. And also, if we, if we overdo it, we're going to disincentivize the actual act of investing. Now, yesterday I posted just a real brief blog. And if you got the email and you didn't click on it, please go ahead and click on it. It'll just take you a few seconds. What I posted was a couple of pictures. One of a young man holding or surrounded by 1980s technology. The other picture was just a hand holding an iPhone. I even made reference to environmentalists, and you'll see exactly what I mean when you look at the two pictures. Um, folks, the, the innovation, the, 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 the technology advances that we've seen over the last few years, of course, have almost immeasurably changed our lives for the better, both personally and professionally. Um, that came from individuals pursuing their own objectives, pursuing, in fact, capital gains. It didn't come from bureaucrats. It didn't come from as a result of subsidies or anything like that. It just came from smart individuals like Steve Jobs pursuing their own objectives, uh, the foresight into what the consumer would want, what would better the consumer's lives, what the consumers would be willing to spend their money on, um, created the technology that we have today. And again, I'll say it once again, the pursuit of capital gain. Um, folks, our country is built, our economy is built on investing. It's not built on consumption. The economy, today's economist likes to say that two-thirds of the economy is consumer consumption. we got to have investing. As I wrote recently, the chicken indeed comes first, folks. We've got to focus on investing. All of this should make us nervous. Right now, near term, in particular, I want to start focusing on capital gains and the prospects for raising capital gains taxes. I think that's a very bad idea in light of where we are currently. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, happy Easter. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope it made sense. And I'll be back at you soon. Take care.